we're not necessarily, uh, you know, overjoyed with the outcome of this election. But I do think that there is an opportunity for us to at least enjoy um, some uh, schadenfreude, as it were. Uh, here is Lou Dobbs <laughs> and Rick Grinnell. This guy, like, talk about like a uh, jack of all trades. He's gone from like the ambassador, uh, I can't remember where it was, uh, to Germany, yep. to uh, the head of the D, like an acting head of the DNI, to like some type of uh, a legal consigliari for uh, Trump's campaign. Here is Lou Dobb uh, on with Rick Grinnell, who um, made Lou, these- Lou Dobbs might be the most unhinged member of the media. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's my hot take. <laughs> Here, yeah, well, let's, let's see if you're right. 60. It, 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 Let me get to the point, Lou. 3,060 people yes, here in please. Nevada that voted, that voted illegally. They are not residents of Nevada. They did not meet the residency requirement. This is easily available information that the media should have found. We found it today. We are releasing this. These people potentially could oh, all be violating Rick, now federal I, may law. I, may I interrupt and so you here, we are Rick, going to ask DOJ I, I really and think we're going to ask the FBI to look you at say, each Rick, one of these. If I may, you're going to. You're going to. This is Thursday. You were filing a legal action today against those fraudulent votes. Has that been filed? Because you're complaining yeah, so about the, the press instead will be of filed. telling us what you're actually getting done. As you said, you have a job to yeah. do. I'm interested in what you're doing about your job. You have no reason to expect whatsoever, yeah. experientially, that that media would be any more helpful, fair, or intelligent on this story than they would any other for this administration. Well, let me be clear, Lou. I would have had the letter out to DOJ and the FBI if I, ha if I wasn't sitting here on your show. But I committed to come on your show, and so we're holding it uh, to, to double check it. That letter will be out within, let me just say, 90 minutes so that it gives us a little bit of a cushion time. That letter will be out. Uh, the lawsuit will be filed uh, within the next few hours. Um, you know, we're mm -hmm. putting together big, large pieces of information and uh, we big, have a small team. And honor. so, again, when I complain big, about the media who have large teams, I think this is quite a appropriate. Uh, we are going to get both of those things that I described out tonight, and you will see them. Tonight? Tonight. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, he's already pushing the deadline. I mean, you know, Lou Dobbs has got a point, it seems to me. Well, I love that. Like, firstly, yeah, I, I, I love his priorities. His first Lou Dobbs show, then the letter, then the lawsuit, right? right? <laughs> and I like how he's trying to make Lou Dobbs feel guilty. Lou, it's only because I promised you that I couldn't get it done. Yeah, yeah. If only you hadn't booked me for your show, we'd be taking back the election right now. And also, I love how Lou Dobbs, it's, he's not challenging any of the claims here. He's mad that they aren't more competent and actually putting them through in the courts. You like, he's, he's annoyed at the Trump administration for not cracking down on this fraud. <laughs> well, I mean, I got to say, I think Lou Dobbs has a point here. And I'm a little bit, I mean, at one, at one point as I was listening to this stuff yesterday or reading about it over the past couple of days, it has become clear that the Republican Party apparatus, and by that I'm talking, I'm, 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 I'm using it in its most expansive uh, terms, you know, whether it's like the Koch brothers or whether it's, you know, uh, the, the Federalist Society or Heritage or whatever it is, they seem to either have decided we're not getting, we're not deploying or uh, they've run out of people because it is clear. I mean, Grinnell in that clip said like, look, we have a small team. What? Like, I mean, like you have a small team that your campaign raised a billion dollars. How do you have a small team on something that you've been telegraphing to, you know, that so that me sitting in my closet with a microphone was aware of what your strategy was like down to the locales and like, you know, these are not 
Pennsylvania, who could have imagined? Or, you know, or Nevada, who could have imagined? Like, you're telling me you got small teams there? What? You've been telegraphing this for weeks and months. And I think that they just had trouble finding like competent people to go out and do this. People were like, I'm not, I'm like, I'm, it's too close. It's too right. close. Like, well, like well, all the people you're... are jumping off, all the rats are jumping off the ship and they're like, yeah. you're inviting me on, on the final cruise. No, I'm not coming on the final cruise. Yeah. To, to, uh, to, to back up what you're saying. I mean, you're seeing that most Republicans behind the scenes are not backing up these claims, even though now, I mean, First, Don Jr. calls out Lindsey Graham on Twitter. Then Lindsey Graham, you know, comes and, and, and is now making media appearances talking about potential fraud. Ted Cruz is now doing so. But most of the savvier establishment Republican types behind the scenes, they're not backing up these claims. And I'm sure that Trump and his ilk had a really hard time getting the traditional GOP apparatus, which begrudgingly helped him out in the back uh, in 2016 and in the background in other areas to come to to uh, his defense here with actual staffers and people. I think that's absolutely right. In fact, on Wednesday, and this is from the, the Times, right, uh, Brendan? Uh, on Wednesday, the president's family was heavily involved in efforts to question the validity of the vote tallies. Mr. Trump had joked that at the rally, if he lost, he would never speak to any of his adult children again. <laughs> I mean, do we really know? Have we confirmed that's a joke? Yeah, I mean, uh, jokes have truth in them, so. Mr. Uh, that's called, uh, I think what Dal Frank would say, kidding on the square. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Kushner was making calls, looking for what he described, this is on Wednesday now, for what he described as a James Baker-like figure who could lead the legal effort to dispute the tabulations in different states, according to a person debriefed on discussions. The Trump campaign's for James- looking for... They want Atticus Finch to help uh, them but, out here. <laughs> but they're starting to look on Wednesday. <laughs> They've been talking about, this has been like, remember that whole thing where Donald Trump, I mean, I, I think to a certain extent, Mitch McConnell must have just done a huge, huge job on Donald Trump. He must have said like, look, we need to get Amy Coney Barrett on there for all the legal implications of a case that will come to the Supreme Court. When in fact, Mitch McConnell is thinking like, we need to get her on there because if we get into a lame duck, I'm not going to be able to get her through. And uh, and so you shouldn't deal with the stimulus. And Trump just sat there like a moron, like, OK, yeah, yeah like, OK. Oh, wait a second. Are we going to need a lawyer to go in front of Amy Coney Barrett? OK, would she just do it on her own? From Trump's okay. perspective, wouldn't it have been wiser to keep that seat open for the election? Probably would have increased turnout. A doubt. Without a doubt. He must not have read any of the uh, the articles on that's why 25 percent of the people voted for him the last time. But the the it would have been, behooved him to keep it open because it, you don't get that seat unless I get reelected would have been a huge driving force. It seems to me. I mean, you know, we're talking about marginal voting at that point. Um, and it would have forced Mitch McConnell to pass his freaking, uh, you know, uh, Trump kept going like I'd like it bigger. OK. Go yeah. bigger. Go bigger well, with this. Sounds like somebody failed the art of the deal they, at the end they, of their term. <laughs> but the idea that they're looking for their James Baker on Wednesday, like, oh, their James Baker is sitting around like, oh, well, no, you got to know your James Baker at that point had been chief of staff. The James Baker had been like, you know, had been a, a senator. Like, who is it that they they haven't figured out who that guy's going to be until after the election? That's insane. Right, right. I mean, I think the Trump campaign really got themselves to believe that there was going to be a repeat of 2016 and the polls were all wrong and everything was wrong here. And to an extent they were right. I mean, I'm still flummoxed as to how pollsters did not adjust, uh, even though they said they had adjusted to the dynamics of 2016 for here for 2020, because they were wrong in a lot of areas, but maybe just spoke to his ego. I mean, I I do think you guys are right (laughs) that McConnell was Machiavellian and he knew that his legacy is cementing judges who are going to nix uh, progressive priorities for decades and decades to come. And Amy Coney Barrett is very young, so she'll be on there for decades. And so he also didn't care and saw that his reelection effort wasn't going to be uh, difficult and he didn't need to pass a stimulus. 
So he massaged to Trump's ego and made it about the legal fight and about the election, as opposed to materially helping Americans in an economic depression and a pandemic, um, which Trump has no gauge on and has no idea how badly people are hurting and doesn't care. So appealed to his ego and McConnell got every, everything he wanted. Mitch McConnell's one of the biggest winners of this election cycle. I, I, not just this election cycle. I mean, he was bragging the other day that he's been the most consequential uh, Senate majority leader since uh, LBJ. And frankly, uh, I mean, honestly, like I, I don't know if I have more, um, you know, seething resentment of any um, person that I don't know <laughs> uh, in my life than Mitch McConnell. But I'm sorry, he's uh, he's right. Uh, he 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 is uh, undoubtedly the most consequential Senate Majority Leader, you know, for fifty years, a and um, <clears throat> at least. And you know, we're, you know my uh, my kids are going to be cursing Mitch McConnell if they do just a little bit of homework uh, in college. You know, we we can only hope.